specifics as far as the energy performance contract scope um, and the financials as well. Uh, certainly, if there's any questions, you can feel free to stop us at any time. We're happy to speak further to anything. Okay. Um, so, first off, I wanted to start out with a quick, you know, introduction, reintroduction, really, to Energia. Um, so, we provide owners, representative, and engineering services for school districts looking to implement energy performance contract projects. And we were actually involved uh, and served in this capacity on the district's two previous phases of energy performance contract projects. Um, essentially, you know, we're an energy savings engineering firm. We help quantify and evaluate these opportunities, and then we help districts to implement them. We oversee construction. We're responsible for uh, the design, submission to the state education department, um, and then even involved after the implementation uh, of the, the project to help with the evaluation of the energy savings. Um, we've been involved in over 130 successful projects, again, uh, in both of the previous phases that were done here in the Sable School District as well. Um, so just to set us up with a little bit of activity to date, you know, to get us to this point here tonight, uh, as Rhonda mentioned again, uh, back in the spring, uh, Energy issued a request for proposals, and an RFP document on behalf of the district, to garner more specifically solar proposals from qualified energy services providers. Um, so in the summer, kind of fall window, we received two proposals in response to that RFP um, from Johns Controls and Energy Systems Group. Uh, and after that, we did a very thorough evaluation process. We held interviews with both of the respondents along with uh, Rhonda and Danny as well. Uh, and then as a result of that process, essentially that brings us to this evening where we are seeking approval of a resolution that would allow Energy Systems Group, who again, we have come to the consensus of the winner of the RFP contest, this resolution would allow them to proceed with the next step in the process, which is a more comprehensive audit, um, and that will ultimately culminate in the contract. So the one point I would make about the resolution is that it is no cost, no obligation for the district. Really, this is approval for us to get to the point where we're able to develop a final contract in conjunction with the district, and then we would seek approval of the contract at that point. So with that, I will pass it over to Dan and Katie. If there's any questions for me, I'm still here, so you can sort of loop back with me. But. Thank you, Justin. Good evening, and uh, thank you again for allowing me uh, to present tonight to the board. We are excited to be here, and I'm looking forward to work on the solar project with the district. Uh, ESG finished a, uh, the previous phase of the project two years ago, uh, which uh, we provided much needed any improvement to the district for uh, lighting, HVC controls. Um, we installed the boiler at this building and also uh, combined heat and power at the middle, middle school. Um, all of the energy improvements were paid for with the energy savings, so there was no money out of pocket from, for the district. Um, as you know, we've been working uh, with the district for a number of years now, looking into stone solar to all the buildings. Uh, but uh, the comment was not right uh, because the, the district had all the roof. It wasn't a good uh, time for us to do the solar. And now that the district is already in the process of replacing three of the six and then three more this summer. so. Uh, by next year, the district will have new, all new roofs, so it's the, the perfect time for the district to do uh, solar uh, on, the, on the district. Uh, we will dis and tonight, we will discuss about the approach of the project, um, the energy savings, how we get here, and the schedule for the implementation of the project. Uh, just a quick note, uh, currently the district spend uh, on the electric uh, for last year was about $822,000. Uh, with the proposed solar uh, that we want to install, uh, the district will save roughly about $408,000, which is about roughly about 50% of the district uh, electric expense. On top of that, the district will also uh, help the environment, saving uh, carbon emissions and sacks and knocks uh, for the environment. Uh, we propose a total of roughly two megawatt uh, 
for the six schools, uh, six buildings uh, on the on the screen. Uh, the first, can you go back to the first screen? Uh, on the left, the uh, high school. Those are the solar layouts. It's a little bit tough to see, but those are the panels that we propose to install. The high school, the, the middle is the middle school, and then on the right is Cherry Avenue. Next slide. Uh, and then there are the Lincoln on the left, uh, Sunrise <coughs> Elementary School, and the uh, solar at this building, administration building. Look. Looking ahead, uh, with the proposed project, uh, there will pertain potential to do additional work uh, that we can uh, talk to the district as a, as a co-author. If we want, uh, if we can include a um, old junior high school, uh, the maintenance building, and potentially community solar. <coughs> Um, with the solar project, the district will greatly benefit from the, uh, the federal inflation uh, reduction act. Uh, we estimate about $2.2 .2 million that the district will get from the federal for the, uh, for the work. With that uh, additional fund, we can work with the district to see if we can do additional work, much needed work for boilers, uh, building automation system, Heating, ventilation, controls, or any other maintenance work that the district would like to include in the project. Uh, next, I would like to turn over to Katie to discuss the schedule and the, the next step to the for the uh, construction phase. Katie? Hi, everyone. So, with the selection of um, ESG, if we got that in November, then we can move forward with submitting to SED by February of 2024. Hopefully, then receiving SED approval. We could then get that around October 2024, starting construction in December 2024, and having substantial completion by December 2025. So construction-wise, the project would take approximately a year. Um, so throughout this, we're working with you on building your project. So we're doing the comprehensive energy audit, then going into design and procurement, and then construction. And through construction, we would be having our kickoff meeting weekly updates so that everyone is apprised of the progress that we're making. Um, and then we would go into the performance evaluation, which is where our m &B team would come in to make sure that we're meeting the savings that we mm -hmm. guarantee to you. Mm -hmm. So as Dan mentioned, you're not only getting a 50% reduction in costs for your energy, you're saving, so you're getting a 70% reduction of your energy use by using the solar. Um, as Dan also mentioned, you'll get 2.2 million from the IRA. ITC program, which you can then put back into other energy saving projects that we can do for you. Um, the simple payback is 12 and a half years. Over the 18 years, you'll get almost $19 million in savings. And then we also provide um, some student engagement programs, which I heard you guys are really killing it at that. So <laughs> um, we also provide career conversations. Um, you get to hear, the students will get to hear about different um, careers out there, ones that they might not have heard of. I know I didn't know anything about being a senior project manager for an energy company when I was in high school, so it would probably be pretty cool if we were, I was able to tell that to somebody else. Um, is there any questions at the board or anybody has? No, no. You go. Oh. I just, <laughs> um, no, I just want to say thank you. No, this is kind of why I got interested in your board many months ago. Sorry. Um, no, we've had great success with previous uh, energy performance contracts. I think, if memory serves correct, just back in the napkin, I think we were able to save taxpayers around $70 a year um, with the second phase, and it looks like this is kind of in line with that. So, um, again, at a, at a no upfront cost for us, it's, it's a win-win. Um, I was wondering, with the curriculum piece, I know schools in New Jersey actually had monitoring stations built into the schools with the solar. I don't know if you guys have had experiences with that or if that's a possibility, but you know, especially on the high school level where we're getting into green collar jobs, I feel like that would be a nice. So one of the things that I know we also can work with you guys is putting something on your website so that you can see oh, you bet, activity yeah. Just of, use the software, yeah. Yeah, of the software for the solar panel so you can see what is going on on a you know, on an incremental basis, yeah. but it's something that definitely could be checked on yeah. by students, by parents, by faculty. Great, yeah. And again, the building management system piece too, I 
Mm -hmm. Very cool. And we can put kiosks at each of the buildings so you can know live how much the solar is generating. Yeah. And we have we have an AP environmental here too, so it kind of, I know, kind of goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, also, in the past, I know we've been able to pull uh, capital projects out of our other budget and actually incorporate it into the EPC. Some, you know, and that's part of the pro um, yeah. the way we'll work together, and where that 2.2 million dollars can come into play, and work on some of the things that the district decides is would help. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, as far as uh, I, I saw from the pictures, so everything's going to be on roofs, right? No Correct. freestanding solar. All on the roofs. Power. And will there be any um, external equipment on the sides of the building, or how, how does that normally work? So there is usually like a transformer that gets installed, um, and that would be a discussion with the individual schools, with facility directors to decide where that would go, but then it is protected um, from anyone going to it. Okay. And um, the timeline, because I, I saw it, uh, yeah, uh, December, so how many months of construction? Do 12 we months. What? 12 months of construction. 12 months. To do the six schools. Okay, but is that, uh, does it impact uh, routine operations? Or how, how does that work? So our, um, our partner that installs the solar, they come in before school starts. They'll go up onto the roof. And you don't hear them. They use like screw guns. It's not like loud, noisy work on the roofs. And then they'll leave by two o'clock, which is usually before students even get out of school. So it's kind of shifted so that they don't interact with the students. And uh, I guess part of the, uh, this pre-evaluation will be determined what, yes. what the roofs can handle, or has it already been done? I think as they explained, um, a more in-depth, once they are appointed as the vendor, they would do a more in-depth energy uh, analysis. And structural analysis mm -hmm. for what the roofs can handle. And the largest part of the timeline really is looking for SED approval. That's well, that, that, uh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm just wondering because it's starting right in, in December, the construction right in the school year. So normally we always try to do projects like this. So. And um, with the old junior high, do they pay their own utilities, or do, uh, how would that work? I believe the, I believe the lease does include um, a utility piece to that. Um, it would save, though. Yeah. Yeah. The old junior high is in the middle of where it is with the roof warranty, so there's options out there to coat the roof that will give you an extra 20-year warranty. So that's an option that we're going to look at because. It didn't make sense at the time we were doing the bond to actually rip that roof. Uh, the other roofs are more of a concern because of the wet insulation and stuff like that. So being in the middle of the roof warranty, there's an option out there of doing the coating that is approved with solar that will give you a 20 year warranty and allow you to do the solar as well. Okay, good. And it kind of timely, time wise works well if we choose to do this because all of our roofs will have been done by next summer within the school buildings, you know, not the junior high buildings. So that kind of lines up with when we can do this. And the other time factor constraint is that the Inflation Reduction Act, as of right now, 2025, it's over. So there's a time constraint on getting it done prior to that. It's been extended, and hopefully it gets extended again, but that's definitely a time constraint on it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. All right, so uh, that concludes the superintendent's report. I turn it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so um, for board discussion, we have uh, training opportunities. So the first one we'll discuss is uh, so November 29th, we have the fiscal governance training, which is provided by the So if anybody wants to sign up for that, it's on the 29th. I, I won't be able to go. I signed up for that. I'm going. Okay. And then um, we have other training opportunities. Um, yeah, I was thinking, um, you know, I think Christine and I are probably the most recent um, new board members that have received Board of Education or, or board member training um, as far as on, right, on being a board member and the ethics of board members. Um, and I, 
I've been thinking about um, maybe it might be a good idea to have a refresher course for the entire board um, to go over those those requirements and those ethics that you know are are instilled for the board members. And oddly enough, this board is offering uh, that type of training. Oh, yeah, there, there, there was an email on that I think uh, this week, I think. so they can work out a program, to customize it uh, to our district. And, so like an in-person yeah. yeah. So we can look into that if everybody leaves. That'd be good, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, we have... Just turned it. It'll take a few minutes. <laughs> Just a couple of seconds. Okay, we have the claims order report. Any comments on that? Everything looked good as far as I could see on the report. There were no uh, real issues. It was just one item that I was questioned and then got the information in here. Okay. Uh, any other topics for discussion? Okay. So, what I would like to do tonight is I would just like to take things out of order and uh, do a business first. Okay. So, uh, let me just go through that. Let's, uh, we have recommended actions minutes, uh, 7.01 to recommended action finance, 801 to 811. Have a motion? Second. 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 Okay. Uh, discussion on those items? We're doing seven through all eight. seven zero one and recommending the action finance. Yes. Any, any questions? Yes. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Against? Motion passes. Okay, then we're going to do um, new business personnel items nine zero one to nine zero five to new business other ten zero one to ten point zero three. Need a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Discussion? I just want to make a comment. Sure. That, um, I was, I, you know, obviously are appointing a bunch of um, different positions, but uh, I was excited to see the number of student interns and observers that we are bringing into the district. There is definitely a lot of discussion around the state about the shortage of teachers and the lack of um, students actually entering into the field. Um, so I think that it's that was a good thing for us as a district because we have to start ever replacing people. It's good to know that they're still wanting, this is a place they still want to come to. We can't even bring <coughs> all the requests and we try. We try. It's, uh, it's been incredible how yeah. many people come back. Okay. Um, also, also that policy review. Yes. Um, it's, it, I don't know if you want to discuss it real quick. It's just it's just verbiage for um, giving teachers the, the time allotted for uh, if they wanted to do any blood or if they have um, cancer screening and get like a, a set amount of day, uh, hours off from work. Yeah, the cancer part was it was first just for breast and prostate cancer, and now they just they extend it to all cancer. Yeah, yeah for screening. So that can be prostate cancer. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so and all those in favor? Against? Motion passed. Okay, and then we have, hold on one second. Upcoming dates. So on uh, November 16th, 17th, and 18th, in middle school, we have the play Bye Bye Party Junior. And then we have on November 17th, we have the playoff games at Stony Brook. And then on uh, Thanksgiving is on the 22nd. Uh, on the 5th of December is a middle school concert. Uh, and this, oh, that's for, that's the middle school. And then the Sunrise has a middle school concert on the 6th. Hanukkah begins on the 7th. On the 12th, we have a Cherry Oak concert at the high school. And December 13th, we have a Louisiana concert at the middle school. I also do want to point out that the high school is doing the first time ever Community Connect Day on Tuesday the 21st 
uh, where almost every student in the high school is going to go out into the community and will do something in the schools to help others in the community uh, try to some students. So I just want to give a shout out to the high school staff, to Mr. Hopper, for organizing an entire day of learning focused on community service. And that's really a uh, credit to the staff and to the students. It's going to be a great day and we thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, so now uh, we're going to go to the public comment uh, portion of the statement. Board of Education appreciates feedback from the community and we recognize free speech as one of our fundamental freedoms. These freedoms are not without restrictions. We follow regulations specified by law and board policy. We encourage our community members to offer public comment. According to stable Board of Education policy 1230, we request the following. Participant, participants in public session must dem demonstrate civility as they address the board and community. 30 minutes have been set aside for comments by the public. The board reserves the right to limit or extend public participation if it deems necessary. Com uh, comments and questions from the public are limited to three minutes per person and should be related to school matters. Speakers are requested to identify themselves or the group they represent and direct their comments to the board. The board will not permit discussion involving individual students, district personnel, or community members. The full policy is available on the district website, and we appreciate your support to have a productive meeting. Thank you. So now can I have a show of hands and who would like to speak? Okay. And uh, so I guess we could start uh, on the end of the Good evening. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. My husband and I have lived in Sable for over 29 years. We have raised our three sons here and now have two grandchildren in the community. Our two oldest sons att attended, Sable High School, attended Sable schools until eighth grade and then transferred to Catholic High School. Our youngest planned on following in his brother's footsteps but returned to Sable. He returned for one reason and one reason only, Sable soccer. Those boys weren't just his teammates or his best friends, but they were part of his family. When the current season was canceled and the media began their reporting, describing Sable Soccer as a group of racist, violent, anti-Semites, our son was shocked, heartbroken, saying, we love one another, we are family. Some say that racist, violent, anti-Semitic behavior is learned. If that is so, by extension, you have called my husband and me racist, violent, anti-Semites. I'm here to assure you that we are not, and we, are re and we resent being portrayed in such a way. Actually, we portrayed the entire stable community that way. Our son is one of the young men John Burke spoke about a few weeks ago. He has worked for Mr. Burke as a trainer at Amon. While attending college, he is also in the process of obtaining additional coaching certifications. While he will always have a home at Amon, he is concerned that including Sable soccer on his resume he will be immediately passed over due to the stigma placed upon all Sable Soccer alumni by Dr. Ferris. In my three decades as a taxpayer in Sable School District, I can count on one hand the number of board meetings I have attended. I had confidence, trust in the board and superintendent. That trust and confidence no longer exists. The majority of those meetings have been since the soccer season was canceled and the subsequent careless and irrevocable statements made by Dr. Ferris. The other time I attended a board meeting was over 20 years ago when the budget failed to pass. Dr. Jones, the superintendent at the time, held a community forum at the high school. She said the community has spoken and we cannot put the budget up for a revote as it is. Adjustments were made and the budget subsequently passed. That is what leaders do. They listen and respond accordingly. There is no leadership here. You are ignoring our concerns, are not taking us seriously, and probably hope we will eventually go away. <clears throat> this is the third board meeting and still no response to the Sable community. I am here to tell you that I have raised my children and retired and therefore have not only the time but the stamina. I will not stop until Dr. Ferris is removed by the board for his reckless harmful actions. By the way, when our son learned that the current seniors were hesitant to wear the Sable <coughs> soccer jackets, as a college junior, he began wearing his soccer jacket in solidarity for his Sable soccer family. Thank you. Uh, 
Anybody else? Good can evening. I, can I just ask a question? Can you? She has a microphone. It's hard to hear. Oh, I'll be plenty loud. <laughs> my name is Kim Polito, and my family has lived in Sayville for 13 years. We have a 2022 Sayville graduate, as well as a current eighth grader and fifth grader. I appear tonight in support of Sayville boys soccer and specifically those boys who have been branded as anti-Semitic and racist by the current administration, and then in a clarifying statement, further slandered in those same words. It's now apparent that the Sayville community is willing to speak up on behalf of those boys. The 21-22 school year was an amazing season for boys soccer. And it wasn't just because those boys made the playoffs by the skin of their teeth and then went on to the Suffolk County Championship game, or because lasting friendships were made on and off the field, or because those boys rallied around their coaches, those hard around the edges, difficult coaches, even attending the wake of Val Winter's wife, Celine, because that's what family does. No, while all of that was amazing, it's what was missing that was really special. And what was missing was one parent on the sidelines. My son's not getting enough playing time. My son was not named a captain. I'm going to get these coaches fired. That went on for the entirety of my son's Sayville soccer career. And I think the entire program is owed an apology. But instead, here I stand tonight defending the reputations of our boys who have been recklessly used as scapegoats by this administration. Upstanding young man, whom you've never even met personally, Dr. Ferris. Nonetheless, you deemed it acceptable to label them in the most defamatory terms that will likely ever be used against them in their lifetimes. And then you release those written words out to the public for speculation, judgment, and condemnation. So my questions here tonight are, one, what is the evidence of systemic racism and anti-Semitism? Please provide a bulleted list as there should be multiple widespread acts to qualify as systemic. Two, to this board, please provide any documents you vetted before extending an offer of employment to Dr. Ferris. My son was interviewed years ago as part of the investigation into Sayville Soccer. I've never heard about any findings from that investigation until Dr. Ferris's allegations made last month. Therefore, I request the findings of the investigation. I'll also note here that before anyone in this, under Dr. Stimmel's administration spoke to my son, they called me for my permission to speak to him. <laughs> Current complaints are about players having been spoken to without parental consent. A cursory search of Dr. Ferris's background reveals he's been personally named as a defendant in several lawsuits. No. One of those lawsuits cites, no, it's public record, cites the following, but no, nothing in this investigation was public record. That lawsuit is public record. One of those lawsuits cites the following causes of action, defamation of character, slander, and unreasonable seizure or interview of a child. Wow, that's shockingly familiar, isn't it? To the board, you are elected by us. The superintendent reports to you. Community members continue to stand up in this forum and implore you to act. Parents want Dr. Ferris held accountable and they keep telling you this. And that accountability needs to go well beyond the verbal apology made within the small walls of this boardroom a few weeks ago. At the last board meeting, a member lamented, well, we're just volunteers. No, you're not just a volunteer. You went out, you got petitions signed, you campaigned, and you got elected to the seat in which you sit. You are obligated to fulfill your responsibilities. If anyone sitting up there tonight feels they do not have the time, capability, or backbone to act, step down now. And to everyone else in this community, if you fail to act, please join together in voting them all out.
have yeah. heard. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. There are other people. Someone else. Yeah. And then I hope to go after her. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so on October 11th, I came here to state that a board member emailed my daughter's personal information to an outside committee. This email included my child's name, classes, artwork, and even personality traits. Myself and my child do not know anyone in these emails. He also tried to get her to come and speak at this outside, non-school related committee without my knowledge by going through the school art director. At this time, I am now requesting that an external investigation be conducted as my requests for emails regarding the situation have not been supplied, as well as a lack of action by the BOE, which is fully aware of the egregious misconduct by this board member. I want the BOE to address this and vote on it ASAP as enough time has elapsed since I made everyone aware of what took place as well as I supplied supporting documentation as evidence. Thank you. Hi everybody. I have a copy of New York State Open Meeting Law for each of you so you know the reasons why you can enter executive session and what you can discuss. Policy is not one of them. I hope you read them. Just a couple of questions. I only have three minutes, so I'll, sorry I don't have all the niceties, but thank you for all being here. Thank you for letting me speak. Why are we recording in low definition? We have the capabilities to do 1080. I have to bring this old camera here that does better. You do it on the football field, you do it in the gym, and here we get 360, it's horrible. It's, it's inexcusable. I thought you got a new camera, okay? Please fix that. The Island Hills Committee letter. The reason for not writing one was ridiculous at the last meeting. Doug, the attorney, was sitting in Maureen Dolan's seat. Any one of you could have asked Doug, what should we write in that letter? Nobody thought to ask him. He's being paid on a retainer. Connect what school board is writing the letter. Somebody could have contacted Connect Doug works for Connect also. Please do that. They're sending a letter. Find out what theirs is. See if you're all in consensus <coughs> with it. It's not like we don't know what to write. That's ridiculous. You knew what to write when you sent out the soccer letter. Okay, you can figure out Island Hills. 97% of the community does not want a zone change. That's a fact. Thank you. About James. I was the one who became in possession of those emails with that student. I thoroughly support her request for an external investigation, not you guys to do it. Nothing's happening. Just like nothing will happen for these soccer parents, but they don't know it yet. Please do an external one or I will be here the next meeting reading his emails. So the whole community can hear how he attempted to pursue a student, not only give out the information, James, please, you're an elected official. What you did was wrong. You're a teacher. You shouldn't be discussing students with anyone. Anyone. These were people outside. I have your emails. So this needs to be done. I will read them. I can post them online, but I can read the, redact the student's name because I know better than to do what you did. And I'm not even an educator. Please do an external investigation. I don't care what it costs. I don't. And you shouldn't either because we should be protecting all these children. Thank you. I'll just say, uh, regarding the uh, uh, regarding the uh, concern with the board member, um, we understand your concerns and your desire to know more about the subject. But according to open meetings law, we cannot discuss it. All concerns brought to the board are taken seriously, and, and they are followed up. I don't know what uh, that means. We also do have training. What does that mean? Uh, also pursue training oh. on going as well. Give me so training. It's an easy document. Any ninth grader could understand open meeting law. Here's your copies. Yeah, exactly. Public assistance. Okay. 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 Ok
officials there. A, a ninth grader can understand open meeting club. Please, please give those out to everybody. Executive session okay. session is in. Can you please sit down? Sure, I've got to give them to you. But just as a follow-up, we, we were all here two weeks ago. Somebody had an issue with the parking. We're here two weeks later. It appears as though you fixed the parking. We're working. Right? We're working on it. Working on it. We've been here for Month. meeting after meeting after meeting, and nothing had, okay. we, we've gotten nothing. I'm going to give you a response. Thank you. I mean, as a parent and as a, a community member, I understand you know, you were affected directly by the situation. Um, as a board member, I, I understand our role is responsibility is ensure that every student is safe, okay? What was discovered on the soccer team was not a safe situation. So with the cancellation of the season. That's not what we're talking about. about. No, no, let me finish. That's not what we're talking I'm, about. I'm trying to address the situation. Okay. With the cancellation of the season, the, the board supported that decision with that situation. With the anti-Semitic comments, they did happen, okay? Yeah. There's a big and, difference between comments and, and behavior. And where's the and proof from this year of the kids doing that? Tom, you and where is the Okay, look. Tom, you wrote a letter. It's fine. I'll have my questions in writing. So guys, if you can't do that. that. Look, I'm going to shut down the meeting if I, if I can. Oh, what's, what's, what's the difference? You do nothing anyway. Well, because oh, well, I'm going to turn and we're not going to have the meeting. All right, go ahead. Okay. So could things have been handled differently? <laughs> Everything can be. And, yeah, you know, we invite, you know, parents to, to reach out either to the superintendent or to, to the principal. And, you know, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have done that. From we're we're trying trying to see see as well. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to have to adjourn the meeting. I guess we'll have to go to the newsroom. But that's really yeah. easy for you to do instead of just listening, isn't it? Right. What's up? That's really easy for you to do instead of just listening no, no, time no, after time after time. I can't be time. over you. And okay. we heard the dates. I asked the very had but No say, adult is held accountable. Say, You're responding. holding children. Does anybody on this board d disagree with him? Like, does anybody say, I understand I think how you feel? We don't want to have a back and forth. If someone wanted to make a public comment, I'll hold it. Okay. 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 Like I said, we support the decision with the end of the season. And we want to move forward and find ways uh, to, to make this situation. Make it go away. No, 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 no. Talking about the yes. end of the season. No, because there, the were, there are issues that need to be addressed and they have to be So you're, you're uh, just to clarify, so I understand, you're, you're saying you agree that the current team, the seniors and the juniors of this team, are racist. Racist and no, anti Semitic. Well, that, that's what you just said, isn't it? Oh, no, no, you're saying our son is graduated. Wait, 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 my son graduated with the 2018. Let him speak. Yeah. Yeah. I'd just like to. The, the, the email that I sent in the first paragraph outlined the hazing that we found, which did occur on the soccer team, and the reason for the cancellation of the season. Two weeks prior to that email being sent out, the board was informed by an outside council that Understood. the anti-Semitism and the events that occurred on the previous team did occur. So what was the last email sent out two weeks ago? Okay. Why so when I was sending out the email to the Just let him finish. finish. My intent was to simply say that this year there was hazing. We're putting an end to that, and we want to end the season because of that. Also, in previous years, it's been reported there's been anti-Semitism, and we want to make sure that we, the community knows that none of those things are acceptable in our schools. My intention was never to link the anti-Semitism and racism to the current team. Makes no sense. And I understand how you feel, and that when the newspapers picked up on it, they took that no, it was clear to me. Okay, so I, I just want to qualify. My son was no, not on the current team, and he's who you're qualifying as anti-Semitic and racist. Right. And I am not okay with that. And you that call this just and you I, called it systemic. No, that means more than once. I mean, I'm putting in the request in writing, so I'll get the results. Can I just stop? Can I just speak, please? Yeah. 
I'm gonna just go. No, 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 no. Sorry, we already had five. No. Oh, what? Oh, You're gonna like. It's not thirty minutes. Okay. It has not been thirty yeah, minutes. Yeah, we get thirty minutes. Right. Minutes. Right. I didn't even use my three minutes. Listen, That's right. I wasn't gonna me. speak, and I had something. That I think now, listening to you, I think it's important that we do speak. Okay. My name is John Burke. I spoke at the last meeting. I gave you a little bit of background on myself. Uh, prior to the last meeting, I had never attended a board of education meeting before I had even watched one. I went back and I did some research myself. I went back and watched film. And I watched about six to seven meetings, right? And what I noticed was that the public section of this meeting, it turns into a yelling, complaining, ranting fest of 30 minutes where the community goes off on you. And it gives you, you guys look there, you give the appearance that you're gonna care, you limit the time to everyone, and I get it why you do that, right? I looked at the Board of Education, and I realized, man, you guys live in this community, right? And I thought to myself, man, they got big salaries, they really must care a lot. Because why on earth would you want to be part of this Board of Education so you can sit up here and have everyone scream and yell at you? And I thought to myself, it led to the why. And the why and this is very, very, very important for people to understand. It came down to me as perception versus perspective, right? Two very, very similar words, but with different meanings. And the perception is how we look at the world through our own lens. It's unique only to you, and it's unique only to the individual. People are often trying to convince other people of their own perception. There's no advantage in your own perception, because it's what most people do when you find yourself in a disagreement with anyone, and that's why you can never agree. We need to move off of perception, and we need to move on to perspective. Now perspective, that's the art of observing the world outside of yourself. The art of sitting in the shoes of the person opposite you, feeling what they feel. What is their life like? Are they comfortable, uncomfortable? What are the stressors in their life? When you're able to get into other people's perspective, you free ourselves from the emotions that are inside of us, and it allows your brain to think more clearly, and it allows you to make more informed decisions. I've been meditating for the past month, right? And I've been trying to get into your perspective. And I've been sitting down trying to put myself onto this board, and to put myself into the shoes of Dr. Ferris, right? And it became clear to me that we as a community, we are in a no-win situation, right? Because through that meditation and through that perspective of, uh, perspective of seeing what you see, what I've come to realize is I think you all agree that what he wrote about anti-Semitism and racism was awful, and it shouldn't have been in there. And we could have moved on from this situation very easily. We can agree on that, right? You guys are not going to fire Dr. Ferris from this position, right? You guys are not going to step down as the board, right? You're going to give us our time at these meetings, we're going to get our three minutes, then we know what's going to happen. Over time, we're going to go away. Most of us don't even want to be here tonight, right? We'd rather be finishing the Beckham Netflix series, okay? But we come here because we care and we've been hurt. But you guys know, over time, we're going to stop coming, someone else will be here, they're going to have a new problem, they're going to rant and rave, and they're gonna go at you. So we admit defeat in this situation, okay? What we're asking for, for you as a board, and you as a superintendent, to take some time and move off of perception, move into perspective, and put yourself in our shoes. The cancellation of the decision, although a bit harsh, had to be dealt with, right? There was the evidence, there was this, no problem, and we all could have accepted it. But the press release that then came out after that was what was really the awful situation, and that's what we're having a hard time getting over. Now, we came to you at that special meeting. We were prepared, we were calm, we presented in a nice manner to all of you, and then we felt like, oh, the window's open, Whoop, close that window, you guys, okay, you had your time, you're out. And there was no response. And we know, because you realize over time, we're going to fade away. And that's the part that hurts. Now. In a letter that you wrote, Mr. Yonkers listed out 15 different questions, and you guys responded to all these questions, and Jim, Kelly, Carl, Christine, all your names are on this, right? You said in here, from what we're looking for, and I highlighted this, and it says right here that his conduct in this matter requires neither an apology nor a reprimand. Wow. A very, very, that was your words. A very simple, hey guys, I'm sorry. Now, I want to point something out. My first meeting when I spoke here, I said that I was never contacted about that investigation. That was wrong. I went back and I realized, my wife reminded me, she said, hey, you did get a phone call. Owen was on that team, you got a phone call about that. And I said, man, I just stood up in front of these cameras and I completely lied to everyone. 
So I'd like to apologize for that. That was my fault, I didn't do it on purpose, but I was wrong in that situation. A very, very simple statement like that could have prevented this and we can all move on. But that's not the action we put here. That's why we're all here, okay? So now, you probably put that there because you had to pacify a past family, right, about some mm -hmm. other allegations. That's quite possible. What now needs to be noted and said and recorded, there's cameras here, right? right so the, the entire community needs to understand that this conduct that was here, and this was another, this is that same letter that you guys put here, in there, question number seven from Mr. Yonkers, wants to know if the racism, anti-Semitism, were from more than two years ago, before, before the players were on the team, was against faculty, coaches, or students. Your response, in writing, says, Namely, racism and anti-Semitism relate to conduct alleged to have occurred during the 2018-2019 season. Oh my now, you said it alleged to have occurred. So if it alleged to have occurred, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Carl, you're a social studies teacher, right? Okay. Let's just say you have a female student in your classroom, and she alleges that you inappropriately touched her. Yep. Now, I, don't, I don't like that example. Jeff. Okay, <laughs> I'm with you. Listen, listen. No, 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 no. Am I speaking? Am I speaking? No, 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 no. no, 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 speaking? no, no speaking? I know you veer off the topic. Hold on, hold on. Losing perspective, John. No, let me ask. Am I hitting no, no, no. emotions? Good. Now I'm hitting yeah. emotions. Great. Let's just say, <laughs> Kelly. Okay. Let's just say Dr. Ferris has said, "Hey, the volleyball team was a bunch of mean girls and a bunch of other things." Yeah. Are we starting to hit some emotion? Good. Maybe we're getting closer to the truth, Carl, okay? However, let's just say it's alleged to have happened. Let's just say your superintendent comes back and says, hey, Carl has a bad social studies environment because one student in your class made up that story about you. Okay, hold on. Give me 30 seconds, Tom, okay? Give me 30 seconds. I know you love the three minute rule, but give me 30 more seconds to see where this is going, okay? Now, allegedly, that person can ruin your career. What happened at the soccer team, there was a parent, and I was part of that team, that parent alleged a lot of things. If it was proven, show us the facts, and we'll move on from there. And if it wasn't, that's okay. In our hearts, I know that there's no way that you guys can, I look at each and every single one of you, there's no way that you guys lay down your head on uh, your pillow at night and can say, hey, I'm so glad you put that statement in there. It was to pacify an alleged incident. And if it wasn't, Present this the facts, we'll put our tail between our legs, and we will leave. And here's the thing, Carl, I will say this then. I will use myself as the example. I coach girls soccer, okay? Christine had two girls on the team, right? At any point, one of those girls could come to me and say, hey, Coach Birch allegedly uh, sexually touched me. Okay, boom. True or not, that girl can come to you, you guys can come to me, and the countless hours and hours of work that I put into that job Boom, flush down the toilet because of one alleged student. That is scary, okay? That is the world we live in, okay? That is what's happened in this situation, and that is scary, okay? It could be a girls' volleyball team, it could be a social studies class, it could be a, a girls' soccer coach. So if there is proof of this alleged incident, okay, let us know. Now, I know 95% of the time when these things happen, it comes to playing time. I told you my resume last okay. time, and I told you. Okay. Okay, and I, okay, I'll finish that. And then conclusion, here's what's gonna, you know, here's what happens from here, right? It comes from playing time, they allege other stuff, that's where 95 is never the star athlete that gets in trouble, and it's never the star athlete, all, all of that comes from. All right, so here's the thing. You guys win. We're gonna fade out, we're gonna go away. However, at the end of the day, you've heard a community, you guys call yourself educators, what happened is you forgot about the kids. Right? These meetings are about adults bickering with adults. And what happened is you forgot about the kids, okay? That's all I gotta say, Tom. I went over my three minute rule. I didn't even want to speak tonight. I, I but when I the sarcasm. I'm trying to hey, oh I, I'm giving You think that's sarcastic? Here's the thing, Tom. Don't come at me and say this is emotion and this is filled with passion. And you've hurt a lot of people by trying to protect one student. Now I will say this. Last week, the Washington Post published a report that said there is uh, more teenage suicides right now related to bullying than they've ever seen in years. So it's a very, very real issue. And I commend you on taking action against the bullying and the hazing and that. You had to do it. Because that report in the Washington Post is a real issue. And if my son was being bullied and hazed and he wanted to commit suicide, I would be very upset. So I understand why you as educators want to do that. 
But in this situation, all you got to do to fix it is come out, let us know it wasn't right, let the media know it wasn't right, and we can move on. You can't, you can't brush it under the rug and then blame the parents. The district brushed it under the rug, and that's what you did. You're blaming the team. It's wrong. You can't do that. For years. I feel your pain. I, you talked about empathy. You talked about understanding different people's shoes. I understand the pain you're going through and, and the anger that you have. I also, you know, you know, I've been in education for 30 years, and I, I went into education as a teacher because I care about children, and I care about teaching. It's like the passion. And I love every aspect of what I've been involved in in Sable. It's a great community. This has not been pleasant, obviously. And I, I wouldn't wish this kind of situation for you or your kids or for myself. Um, so if I've caused you that pain, I am sorry for that, but I also have a responsibility to the health and welfare of the students in terms of you know, making it clear to the community that hazing is not okay. Uh, but again, I hear you, and I understand, and I know you're going you're gonna to villainize me or put me in some kind of painted picture that I'm this horrible person. At the end of the day, I will do everything I can to help move forward, to help kids, to create an environment where they feel safe and supported. And you may disagree with that, but I'm not quite sure what else to say at this point, but nope. I just want to say that. They make it make put it in writing, that you're sorry you for the accusation. Make it public that you made a mistake. Make it public. That's it. That's all you have to do. It's, it's that simple. It's black and white. I, Dr. Ferris, made a mistake, yeah. and I apologize. Finally, let's go. No, 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 you be quiet. Problem. I gave you the quiet room, now you be quiet. I'll be quiet. quiet. I'm I'm no man, I want to hear it. What problem did she okay. cause? Really? Stop. Stop. Really? Stop. really? First really? of all, I want to say, oh, there, we go. there are so many things that this board cannot say because it is private information. This witch hunt, this accusations towards me, and my family, you want to call me a piece of shit? Do it to my face, not under your now voice. You're accusing of something that's not true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. First of all, this was not about playing time. This was not about anything more than what exactly those kids did. It was not from one year and season. It was from four seasons. My family, my children, never attacked another child. They walked away from those anti-Semitic acts. Not once did they go public. Not once did they name your kids. Not once did another child stand up for my kid. You Don't you dare stand here and tell me it's alleged or it didn't freaking happen because it did. Those kids threw money down at my child and called him a Jew and told him to pick it up. I sat in those parking lots. I watched those kids discriminate against my child. Don't you dare tell me that this didn't happen. Don't you dare say it's alleged. An attorney did the investigation and it was all found. The past administration covered it up. Now you know, this administration did the right thing for my child and everybody else to come. Not just the Jewish kid, the African American kid, the Asian kid, the lesbian gay rights kid, all of them. Because finally, this board did the right thing for every child in this district. Shame on you. Shame on you for blaming this on me when my kid did nothing. My you kid, did your turn is done. My child. 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 My for that time. You're absolutely wrong and you okay, know it, Dan. Right, Bullshit. Dare you be quiet. No, I believe you. Come over here and tell me to be quiet. We have a Jewish hands. representative here and you cut him off in three minutes. In 2017 oh, and 18, a document was submitted to this district 30 some odd pages long discussing in the halls of Sayville the anti-Semitism this was before we filed. We had no idea about this document. It came to us later. In it is detailed accounts from students in a student grievance that face anti-Semitism, black hate, Asian hate, LGBTQ hate, dress code, inappropriate behavior. You're not privy to that document. We were. The school has that document. 
Don't you dare say that anti-Semitism doesn't exist in this district. My family has faced it for 20 years. I have been coming to board meetings, unlike you, for 20 years. Yeah, and I bringing have. it to the attention yeah. of the previous administration, who did nothing, nothing to fix it. And that is why we got to the point of this specific sport, where those kids not only targeted my older son, told him to kill himself. Mm -hmm. He's a Jew. We hate the Jews. Kill the Jews. That's what happened to our family. Don't you dare say that it didn't happen. And the people sitting in this room don't even know you have a kid, Dad. Don't say this is about playing time. Don't make up stories. Don't that's say we had a lawsuit and we lost. Don't do that shit. Everyone knows yeah. it. It's not about playing time. We're already on the train about it then, too. We also had a, another Jewish yeah. representative. Try to call me out. Off. You didn't get that's bullshit. It didn't happen to him because Our sons we didn't do it. it. That's bullshit. Yeah, that's Just so you know, saying what your son did or didn't do and what you were accused of does no way in hell compare to having it done to you. But you're you accusing us of I'm not accusing you. you. Yes, you are. I am not. I'm Absolutely. saying it happened on the Absolutely. previous team and it's been in this district for 10 years. But next team Come on. Why did you continue to fight your kids? And if you knew about it, you should have done something about it. It wasn't this team. It wasn't this team. You know that you're the dad. And you know that you're the dad. You have all the corrupt people, God say. This is for saying you treated Zachary well. This is That's so fucked up. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, right? It's ridiculous. She's on really the I know. I know. That really just happened.